Hey everyone, and welcome back for another Nintendo Switch Indie Review, where today we'll be taking a look at Rava and the Phantom Library. This game is a retro-style 2D action platformer that just released on December 20th of 2023, and it currently sells for $9.99 on the US eShop or your regional equivalents. The game is published by East Asia Soft, and it has a download size of 105 megabytes. Now this is the follow-up to Rava and the Cyclops Curse, which is a 2D action platformer that I actually enjoyed quite a bit. Now will this sequel live up to its predecessor? That's what we'll figure out today. Now, as we jump in, just remember if you are liking the content to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. On this game, you are once again taking on the role of the cutesy humanoid owl character Rava, who is an apprentice summoner assisted by four spirits. Now, in the opening scene of the game, you get trapped within the nightmarish Phantom Library, and you now need to fight your way out of six enchanted book worlds to manage to escape. Story-wise, the presentation of the game is very simple with a cutscene at the beginning and the end of the game, and no other real storyline elements in between, other than what you can deduce from the different levels. Now, this simplistic setup does work for the retro style that the game is going for, however, I would have appreciated even a very short cutscene at the end of each level, just to add a touch bit more lore to the game. This does feel like a slight missed opportunity for the game to really stand out. But at the same time, this being at the budget end of the spectrum for releases isn't really a diminishing factor either. Now, gameplay-wise, this game follows very much the setup of a traditional 2D action platformer. And it feels very heavily inspired by classic titles like the Mega Man series, all the way down to the selectable levels, which can be approached in any order. Where it does differ, however, quite a bit and make it its own, is number one, a slight emphasis on puzzle-like elements to the different levels. And also, for better or for worse, no true progression to your character. Your character has its full suit of abilities from the get-go, with no additional abilities being added as you complete the levels. One thing here also to mention about this is that there is no true tutorial section in this game. Contrary to the first game which introduced each one of the abilities and how to use them, this game gives you all of them from the get-go and just gets you started in an introductory level. Now that introductory level is definitely more on the easy side, letting you ease in and figure out what each one of the abilities does individually. However, for new players that haven't played the previous entry, you might see yourself scratching your head for the first couple of minutes while you figure things out. Now, as mentioned previously, other than your basic wand, this breaks down into four separate abilities. You have a red spirit that will allow you to fire upwards and diagonally with multiple projectiles, however with low individual damage. A green spirit that will allow you to lob a projectile downwards, however with a slower, more powerful blast. A blue spirit that will fire a shot straight forward, however initiating from above your character rather than in front of it. Now, this ability does have the added function of being able to free certain enemies and also destroy certain spiked blocks. And lastly, a yellow spirit that is sort of like a sensing spirit that will reveal hidden secrets and also activate hidden blocks. Now, as you make your way through the levels, different situations will favor different abilities. And you'll also be presented regularly with blocks, some being able to be destroyed only with your basic shot, others with your colored abilities. Now, other than this, you do also have temporary pickups that you can pick up throughout the levels, some powering up your basic attack, others giving you special abilities like double jumping or a shield making you impervious to damage. Lastly, you do have more powerful one-time use spirits that you can pick up in the various levels, and then using the X button for the fusion ability give you a temporary boost in power. This will generally take the form of changing all your abilities to one type of attack, however much more powerful than any individual ability, and most of the levels only have one or two spread out within. Now overall, gameplay-wise, if you played the first game, you will recognize very strongly the level designs here. However, they did take a more action setup to the levels here than in the first game, which did seem much more directed towards the puzzle elements. Is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, because it does streamline the gameplay. However, if what you really enjoyed about that first game was the puzzle-type gameplay, you might be slightly disappointed with this follow-up. Also, the boss fights at the end of each level did leave me slightly disappointed. From the visual side, they had very nice designs, but from the gameplay side, they generally only have one ability that they spam repetitively. 
Once you've actually learned to dodge that ability, the boss fight becomes trivial, with them really feeling like damage sponges. And I would have really liked to have a visual life bar on screen, because some of these boss fights you were just waiting for them to end, with no idea how close you were to beating them. Also as a side note, if you keep your fusion ability, most of the boss fights become trivial. But you being able to mash them out and defeat them in under 30 seconds without even attempting to dodge any of their abilities. So although the level designs were pretty fun and varied, the boss fights which are normally the highlight of these games were on the disappointing end. By the way, the game also does offer three different difficulty levels, however this mostly just plays with the hit points of the enemies and how much damage you take. On the control end of things, I only have good things to say. The controls are efficient and responsive with the button layout well thought out, and offering you different layouts at the same time. With the only real difficulty element coming from the control side, being selecting the right ability rapidly in the midst of a fight. That is important to note here that this will be a fairly short game, it took me about 2.5 hours to complete the normal difficulty level, however at the same time I didn't go out of my way to find all the secret areas and get a 100% completion. The game does promise a special ending for those who do accomplish both those feats. And as a quick hint, do pick up as many coins as you can, it will help you out in the final boss fight. From the graphics side, you can probably already tell from what you've seen, but they are very heavily 8-bit inspired. And I am saying 8-bit inspired because although they look like they would have their place on the NES, the color palette here is much too varied for that old system. And that is what allows this game to really stand out on the visual side. It has a great use of color. And I think for retro enthusiasts, this game will definitely be a feast for the eyes. So on the visual side, I was very pleased with this game, just as I was with the first installment. And the good news is that on the sound side, I was equally as impressed. Each individual level has its own chiptune inspired soundtrack, and although maybe not award winning, they definitely stand out and add to the overall experience. And I really was pleasantly surprised to see an individual track for each level with a fairly long loop, because often, unfortunately, these budget games will recycle the same tracks over and over again in each level. Now we're at the verdict, and if this is the first review of mine that you're watching, my full review scale is available down below in the description of the video. And in the case of Rava and the Phantom Library on the Nintendo Switch, I'll be giving this game a 7, putting it at the low end of a good game. Now remembering that this is a budget release, it's offering really strong visuals, a good soundtrack, and some fun and diverse level designs. However, on the downsides, the boss fights were definitely a letdown, and depending on your perspective, the fact that they streamlined the levels and seemed to focus less on the puzzle elements than the first entry might be a downside for some. But overall, if you're looking for a fast and fun retro style game, this one can be a very good pickup. Now let me know what you thought in the comments down below. And don't forget, on the way out, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and click on that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, hope I'll see you in my next video.